Hey everyone, with this Lightroom tutorial, let me show you how you can transform your waterfall images, making them look way better with much more details and contrast. This is super easy. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So here we have the raw file opened up in Lightroom. First off, let's expand the basic panel. Before I'm adding detail to the waterfall itself, I do want to work on the white balance since, as you can see, it's very, very cold, this image, and I don't want that. So what I want to do next is just bring up the temperature, kind of neutralizing that heavy color cast. I actually want to go somewhat into that yellow warmer range. So that is looking very good. Now, in order to bring out most of the details of this waterfall, we need to do a few things. We need to reduce the highlights in the waterfall so we can see more detail. And at the same time, we want to add contrast and thus we can bring down the shadows, especially in the waterfall itself. So the shadows are standing out against the highlights and thus we are just adding punch to it. So the first step is to just bring down the highlights all the way. And you can see how we instantly can see a lot more details in the waterfall. So next up, let me also introduce some contrast by pulling down the shadows. And while we are adjusting things like highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, always pay close attention to the histogram because we don't want to introduce under or overexposure, but at the moment, this is still looking fine. Right now, you can see we do have a lot of room right here for the brightest areas. In this case, what we can do is to, instead of bringing up the highlights, we can just bring up the whites. This way, we will preserve the details we just restored by dropping the highlights, but at the same time, we will add contrast and some more punch again. And again, just paying close attention to the histogram, you can see I'm getting very close to clipping on both sides. So that's exactly what we want. Actually, we can go a little further down in the darkest areas. And for that reason, let me pull down the blacks. I am actually going a little bit into the underexposed areas, but we will fix that later on with a bit of masking. So you can already see with just a bunch of tonal adjustments, we quite heavily transformed this image. You can see comparing it to before, we have a lot more contrast, a lot more detail in the waterfall itself, but we can further push it with a few easy adjustments. So next up, we want to make use of the presence settings. Those sliders are super helpful for those kind of adjustments. So first off, let me introduce texture. And this will just make a lot more of those tiny little water droplets visible. And of course, it will also add some more detail to the waterfall itself in the center. And for the same effect, we can add some clarity. Clarity will have a kind of more visible impact. So I'm not going too crazy with that clarity overall. Again, we will just make use of a bit of masking later on to add clarity on certain areas. And finally, we can maybe also add a little bit of dehaze just for some extra contrast. All right. And as I want this image to be a little more vibrant, I'm going to bring up the vibrance. So we get some slight blue color in the water, just like that. Now things are looking pretty good so far, but we can use some masking to really transform this image. So let's head into the masking panel. First, what is bothering me the most at the moment is the foreground right here. This area is a little bit too dark for my taste. So I really want to just fix that real quick. Let me just create radial gradient, make it rather big and just overlaying the bottom portion. I'm just going to bring up the blacks, adding some kind of mist to this area down there. And for the same effect, I want to bring down the dehaze. Again, while doing this, I am paying close attention to the histogram since I don't want to overexpose, but this is looking much better and more natural. Let me also create a linear gradient just for that bottom corner right here. And in here, I do want to bring up the exposure, kind of making this area almost pure white, just like this. Okay, 
At this point, we can now focus on the waterfall on which we want to add a lot more detail and punch. So this is easily done using a radial gradient, just trying to fit the shape of the waterfall, rotate it a bit, and I want to cover the most vital area right there in the center. So as I said earlier, we want to have a strong contrast between the shadows and the highlights. So let me first bring down the shadows and you can see this will have a very nice effect on this waterfall. By dropping the shadows, you just kind of add some depth to the image. And we can push the contrast a bit. However, I'm very, very careful pushing the contrast slider since this will always introduce some kind of color cast, or at least it will make the colors in this area a little more intense and it might look weird in some cases. Now, I want to go down to the presence sliders once more. And on this specific area, I really want to pump up the texture, which is not something I would usually do, at least not that much. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring up the clarity all the way up. And this is where the magic happens. As you can see, here is the area without the clarity and here with the clarity added. This gives us so much more details and makes the whole image look so much better. Now we can play around with different radial gradients. So let me create another one. I want to target the left side of the waterfall as well. So again, I'm trying to rotate it, fitting the shape of the waterfall. And again, I'm going to start by adding some contrast. And then again, just bring up the clarity. Wonderful. Depending on your preference, you might want to add multiple radial gradients on top of it, introducing even more clarity. But I think at a certain point it might get a little bit too much. So we might want to stack one more radial gradient on top of it and just slightly bring up the clarity and texture. Just like that. And I think it's looking really good already. Just one more thing that's bothering me and that's the top part since this spot is a little too dark. So let me create a radial gradient in here, just covering the top. And again, just bring up the exposure, fixing the brightness of that area. Maybe even introduce some blacks to add some fake mist coming down the waterfall. But that is looking great. So in order to really see the transformation, let me deactivate the masks. So we went from this to this. As you can see, a lot more detail. And that's all just by using a bit of masking and some tonal adjustments. This was really not that hard. Now at this point, the tutorial part is pretty much over. I think I just want to do a little more color grading. So let me contract the basic panel. I want to head into the HSL window here, work on the saturation for a moment. I think the green tones are a little bit too overwhelming. So let's bring them down. I also want to bring down the blue tones very slightly. This will kind of get rid of the blues overall, but I want to introduce them in a different way. And therefore, let me expand the color grading panel for the split toning. Here I'm targeting the shadows and the mid tones. And just set the hue to something cold and bring up the saturation just a bit. Let's do the same for the mid tones. Set up the hue, bring up the saturation, and that's it. This way, we are just adding some pleasing looking blue color cast to this image. All right, let's see. I think we could use some vignetting. So let's also go into the effects tab and just bring down the vignetting slider. This should be enough. And for some final adjustments, we could use some sharpening, making the waterfall looking even more detailed. As always, I'm using the same settings, bring down the radius, increase the details, Add masking, make sure the waterfall is affected, and then just pump up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. Here we have the finished image. So let's compare to the original RAW once more. You can see and that's a pretty huge transformation. So I hope this quick Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.